Morning guys, today I'm going to tackle a really controversial topic. You may choose to agree or disagree with me. That is the topic of whether or not you should wear a helmet. Now, let me say from the outset, I don't care whether you personally choose to wear a helmet. I don't care whether you choose to protect your head. I'm just going to give you some evidence, some science here. I want you to make up your own mind. If you're in a very quiet rural area, there's probably no need to wear a helmet if there's no traffic around. But can you predict when there's traffic around? Can you always know whether you're going to be in a high risk or low risk situation? Personally, I can't. But let's have a look at these facts. So is cycling a safe activity or is it a hazardous activity? Well, if you look at it per billion hours spent on the bike or per 100,000 or million kilometers traveled in the population, cycling is no less safe than being a pedestrian or being in a vehicle. In fact, in terms of serious accidents, it's actually slightly less risky than those other two groups. But there is a slightly higher chance of having a minor accident. In fact, if you're a cyclist and you have an accident, there's a 70% chance you'll have an injury. Only 30% of the time is there no injury after a bike accident. So um, injuries do occur in cycling and injuries that we're afraid of. Well, if you take um, very serious admissions to A&E, admissions to the ER, serious injuries, serious bodily injury, that's about 10% of accidents that happen while cycling. And head injuries, uh, well, a laceration to the scalp, obviously that's less serious, but may still require a trip to the ER. That's about 30% uh, of accidents involving cyclists. But a serious head injury, uh, serious head injury where a helmet may or may not protect you, that is about 7% of bike accidents. So not all of them, but a substantial number. So why is it that when we look at the population, only a small percentage of people are using helmets? Um, probably across the world, the helmet rate is in high income countries, around 20% or so. It's actually slightly higher in rural areas. It's obviously higher for road cyclists. If you're a roadie, then 40 to 50% are wearing helmets. But those riding the cities on town bikes, hybrid bikes, the rates are often not much more than 10%. Now we know that varies a lot by country, don't we? But there's a market difference by country of origin. So at one end, you've got Italy, where about 3% of people are using helmets while cycling. Incidentally, Italy and Portugal, many, many young men, many young women are not wearing proper helmets whilst on a motorbike. So there's a culture there of not wearing helmets. Look at the other extreme, Ireland, um, Austria. Those are countries where the helmet use is very, very high, above 90%, and not necessarily because of legislation. There's a cultural issue. Now that raises a very interesting question. Can we map out a correlation then between the frequency of helmet use in the population and the number of serious head injuries or more mortality or deaths that occur because of cycling? Well, we can, and the result is a shock, really. The result is the inverse of what you'd expect at uh, face value. So in countries with high helmet use, well, moderate to high helmet use, such as the UK or such as the USA, um, the amount of injuries and serious injuries that cyclists accrue is actually higher than if we take countries where the helmet use is medium, low, or, or very low. So in particular, the classic examples are the Dutch in the Netherlands, you know, uh, helmet use is typically under 10%, but the amount of injuries per kilometer travel is extremely low. Now, this is sometimes reported by some people to be a reason to not wear helmets, but in fact, it's a complete misunderstanding of what's going on. What's going on at the population level is people are not wearing helmets in countries which are safer, and people are, at least in high income countries, are tending to wear helmets in countries which are unsafe. Perhaps a better way to look at this is to not look at the frequency of helmet use, but look at the kilometers traveled by a typical person in that country. So it's per, per pro rata, per person, the Dutch are cycling almost a thousand kilometers a year per person. Whereas the British are cycling about 75 kilometers a year. And in the US, you, you guys in the US are cycling less than 50 kilometers a year per person in the population once bicycle use is averaged out. And there's a very, very high correlation. It's actually 0.8 between the amount of kilometers traveled and the um, low frequency of accidents. So what that means is that if you're cycling in a country where everyone else tends to cycle, 
there's a lot of infrastructure, there's a lot of support, and there's a lot of awareness of cycling and cyclists, which means that road traffic accidents are not as common involving cyclists. So the bottom line there, the take home message, is that yes, we know helmets are not going to protect everyone from every eventuality. Helmets are not even the biggest thing that protects people. The biggest thing is the infrastructure of the country and the awareness of cyclists on the road. However, we do have data regarding helmet users and non-helmet users. Well, I refer you to a very recent meta-analysis, which I'll show you on the screen, which looked at 40 publications, 64,000 cycling accidents, a um, huge number of studies, and these are so-called case control studies. So these are accidents, for example, people presenting to ER after a bicycle accident, they compare those wearing helmets and those without. Now, that's not the same as a randomized controlled trial where you give a group of cyclists a helmet and you give another group equally matched no helmet and you tell them to ride as near normal. That isn't considered an ethical experiment. I don't know why, but because that's not an ethical experiment, you basically can't say that helmet use in those case control studies are definitely the cause of people having less accidents. For example, there are some compensatory mechanisms like, for example, people with helmets might um, ride more confidently or more quickly on the bike. That doesn't mean to say we should throw out those studies. People who have brakes ride more confidently or more quickly on the bike. People who have a time trial bike ride more confidently and generally more quickly on the bike. It doesn't mean to say time trial bikes should be banned. What it says is we can't necessarily draw a clear inference from that study alone. However, the findings are still worth looking at. If we take accidents for those with a helmet compared to accidents for those without, and we're not talking about a small sample. As I said, the total sample here is over 64,000 cyclists involved in accidents. The result is that the chance of you having a facial injury with a bicycle helmet is one third less. The odds ratio is around about 0.66 or so. And the chance of having a serious head injury well, that's the odds ratio of that. The odds are one third. The odds are one third wearing a helmet compared to not wearing a helmet. And the, the odds of having any, any head, head injury at all, well, the odds are about half. Now, odds are not the same as the mathematical difference in risk. In other words, the risk difference or relative risk. And we can get those figures from a pan-European study, which I'll show you here. That pan-European study used similar methodology, but quantitatively just said, what's the difference in the likelihood of cyclists coming to grief with and without a helmet? And the answer is that if you're wearing a helmet, your chance of no injury following an accident is 70%, whereas the chance of no injury not wearing a helmet is 60%. In other words, there's a 10% headline differential. That's the true difference in having some kind of accident and suffering a problem because of it. What about minor injury? Well, the chance of a minor injury is around one in three if you're not wearing a helmet and one in five if you are wearing a helmet. What about serious injury, serious head injury? The chance of serious injury, including serious bodily injury, actually, uh, goes down from 11% to 9% with and without a helmet. That's not to say it goes from you know, 11 to zero, helmet's not going to protect you from every eventuality. It's going to protect you in some situations. It's going to protect you from some accidents. There's a lot of misinformation in this area, a lot of um, contrary arguments. And one contrary argument is that a bicycle helmet's not going to protect you from every incident. That's true. Bicycle helmet is not going to protect you from uh, every incident. You know, wearing bicycling gloves is not going to protect you from every incident. Wearing bi uh, cycle lights at night is not going to protect you from every incident. Another argument is that there's not clear data on what's happened after introduction of legislation. Well, that's actually true. The study is looking at longitudinal data over time before and after legislation. And legislation, by the way, is mostly for under 18s, mostly for kids and teenagers. There's not many countries which have adult cycling legislation. Um, but there is one, one good example that, that I'm reminded of in the literature, and that's from Australia. Australia has introduced legislation on a state-by-state -state basis. It was actually the first country to bring in legislation. Now, the truth is, when you look at the effect of legislation on head injuries and bike-related harm, it's not that clear because 
the improvement in bicycle related injury was already happening when legislation was introduced. So it is correct to say the science of the effect of legislation on whether helmets make a difference isn't that clear. However, there's one very clever analysis, which is the ratio of head injuries versus arm injuries from cycling accidents that has happened before and post legislation. And what I like about this is it tells you not whether there's any difference in accidents per se, but whether the head rather than the arm is getting injured in helmet users versus non-helmet users. And okay, it might not be the uh, final word on this, but it is interesting that the rate is very much below predicted. The rate of head to arm injuries post legislation is way lower than predicted after helmet legislation was introduced. So look guys, as I said at the beginning, I don't care whether you choose to wear a helmet or not. I just want you to be aware of the evidence. I want you to make your own mind up and, you know, ride safely. Do whatever you need to do to ride safely. That's my key message. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good one.